Oh, hello there. Welcome to HiTab, how I think about bikes. And today, it's all about dynamo hubs and internal gear hubs. And we'll build a couple of wheels. These wheels are both 26 inch, and that's a rare thing in 2024. There are less options for rims, tires, and pre-built wheels. So why invest in this antiquated standard? 26 inch wheels were cutting edge ATB tech back when this bike came out, but nowadays new 26ers are very rare outside of crummy department store bikes. They fell out of favor in the early 2000s as mountain bikers realized that rolling over a log is way easier than bunny hopping over it. City bike trends follow mountain bike trends and the 26 inch wheel went from ubiquitous to obscure in less than a decade. Later, when a lot of people realized that 29 inch is just too big, they had to invent 650B because the technology to make 26 inch wheels was lost forever, just like building pyramids and sending people to the moon. Despite history being unkind to 26 inch wheels, they do have some unique advantages. They are short. This means that you have a lot of room over the top of the wheel for bags and tents and whatnot, especially for shorter riders on smaller frames. Some frame builders spec smaller wheels for smaller frames so that shorter riders don't have to deal with awkward geometries. They are very strong. Short, closely spaced spokes are strong spokes, especially when it comes to side loads. A well-built 29er would be just fine rolling off a curb with 100 pounds of beans in the panniers, but it's nice to have some headroom in the factor of safety if you're riding every day or for long distances. They also spin faster. Unfortunately, this does not mean they make you ride faster, but it does mean that the smaller wheel is making more RPMs at a given bike speed. This is important for me because a dynamo hub will explode if it goes too slow, like in that Keanu Reeves movie. I mean, it'll stop producing a usable amount of power if the speed drops too low. Dynamo lights typically have capacitors that prevent going dark during brief stops and slowdowns. But with a smaller wheel, you can keep the lights on at a slower speed. There's party pace, and then there's grocery store pace. So we're happy with our 26 inch wheels, but hardly anyone sells pre-built 26 inch dynamo or internal gear wheels. So the only way forward is to build them from scratch. Any local bike shop will build wheels for you for a modest sum, but I decided to do it myself because my wife has been getting into macrame and she makes lacing intricate strands into unfathomable shapes look like fun. I'm not going to do a wheel building tutorial because there are already a lot of good ones on YouTube and this is actually the first time I am lacing the hubs and building the wheels from scratch, so I'm hardly an expert. Instead, I'll offer a few things I learned that were not in any of the online guides I read. I hope anyone considering building a wheel will find them useful. It's pretty fun and not scary. I will link the guides I used, but it's way easier to build a wheel than do macrame. Use your local bike shop. There are plenty of reputable online retailers out there, but a local bike shop will typically measure and cut your spokes for you if you buy the hub and rim from them. I also used an online calculator just for fun, but it was nice to get a second opinion and the peace of mind that they would redo the spokes if they didn't fit. Use your local bike co-op. Not everyone has a bike co-op nearby, but if you do, then why buy a trimming stand and spoke tensioner when you can just use the one at the bike shop? Do your hub homework. Different hubs have different specifics when it comes to spokes and lacing patterns. For example, the rear Alphine hub requires a two cross lacing pattern rather than the more common three cross because of how wide the hub flange is. I learned this from the original bike wizard of Web 1.0 himself Sheldon Brown, who continues to bless us with wisdom from beyond the grave. The Alphine Dynamo Hub has a keyed axle. Don't do what I did and think that the wheel is way out of true when it was actually the little notch on the axle making the wheel wobble in the truing stand. Don't hesitate to hit the undo button when lacing wheels. I had a couple of false starts where the hub label was not aligned with the valve hole and then I goofed up the over under bit on the head end spokes. It's not a big deal to take a few spokes out and begin again. I put on a favorite movie and just took my time with it. Finally, a few notes on hub, rim, and spoke choice. For the Dynamo hub, I use the Shimano Alphine hub. It's not the most efficient hub on the market, nor is it the cheapest, but it is rebuildable. 
Here in Montreal, we salt the roads like stadium pretzels, and this means that each thaw you are riding around in a brine strong enough to make pickles with. Everything that can't be taken apart and cleaned out or lubricated will be rusted to pieces in short order. No seal is perfect, and brine always finds a way. Rim choice for me largely came down to tire size, brake compatibility, and aesthetics. I chose these Velo Orange Voyagers because they are intended for touring, have a reputation for monstrous strength, and I think they look handsome. Most of what I could find online suggested that 1.8 to 2.0 butted spokes is the sweet spot for spoke strength. For the Alphine IGH, I selected the 8-speed over the 11-speed just because that's what the Juvenal shifters I had available were compatible with. It's slightly lighter and I don't really need the extra range. An internal gear hub needs some way to tension the chain. My frame has horizontal dropouts, so that's covered. The other alternative is an eccentric bottom bracket or chain tensioner. There is specific hardware for the Alphine hub that's different based on the dropout angle. There are details in Shimano's manual and I linked it below. Overall, building these wheels was fun and not scary. I learned a lot and now I have two of the most unique bike wheels on the planet. For anyone watching, I'd be interested to know what your experience was like for building your first wheel or if you have never built a wheel before but are thinking about giving it a shot.